So in this video I'm on the North Yorkshire coast. Uh, I'm at Whitley this morning and what I'm looking at doing is some long exposure seascapes and I'm using the OM1 and the 12 to 40 mil 2.8 lens. I've come up for sunrise. Uh, sunrise was about half past six this morning. Unfortunately I've got a big bank of cloud there um, and although there was some colour in the sky it's certainly gone now. So with long exposure pictures you've got to use some way of actually getting that long exposure in, and you can either use filters on the front of the camera as I've done here or you can use the live ND facility that's on the camera and that's what I'm using this morning. Because there's a little bit of difference between the actual exposure on the sky and actually the foreground, I've got a Lee Soft Edge Grad uh, ND9 I think it is, just to try and balance the exposure up. Shooting in RAW, I can still get sort of uh, a decent picture out of that even though there is some contrast between the sky and the foreground. What I'm actually using today is ISO 200 and that's giving me 8 seconds at f8 and I'm using live ND, ND64 and that's the same as using uh, a 6 stop neutral density filter. At 8 seconds that's going to smooth the water out completely but what I'll actually do is take a variety of shutter speeds. Do some at 8 seconds some at four seconds, some at two seconds, and some at one second. And then in post-production, when I get back on the computer, I'll decide which effect I like best. At the moment, high tide is about an hour away. And although I'm taking pictures on the pier at the moment, using the sunrise, what, what there is of it, and the lighthouse, later on as the tide's coming in more, I'll go down to the slipway because that's a, a really good location for long exposures and there I'll again use a variety of different shutter speeds. So here I've moved to a different position and I'm actually on the slipway that leads down to the beach and from this position it's going to give me a very very nice composition because I've got the slipway going down there, but I've also got the harbour wall and the lighthouse in the background. At the moment, the tide's not quite come up to the quay, but in about half an hour, three quarters of an hour or so, that water's going to be rushing up here. The water's going to look very, very nice. I'll do a, a series of exposures, some at seconds, some at two seconds, some at four and some at eight seconds, and maybe even longer than that. There's some quite nice clouds in the sky, so that will help the composition. The light's actually quite good at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll take some pictures and, and show you the images. So just to show you the setup that I'm using, I've got the Bembo tripod OM1 12-40mm 2.8 and using the Lee filter holder at the front I'm using uh, a nine stop ND soft grad just to hold a little bit of exposure on the sky. Using those filters with a combination of live ND64 that's giving me something like about eight second exposure but with live ND I can change that exposure value very very quickly in the menu and what I'll do is I'll do ND64, ND32 and just do a varied sort of different exposures and it isn't really until I get them back on the picture on the computer and look at the pictures I can decide which shutter speed gives me the effect that I really like. The tide's just coming up to the edge of the slipway and in about half an hour that's going to be rushing up here so I should get some very very nice pictures. These are a few of the other long exposure images taken at Whitby and other areas along the North Yorkshire coast. Even from one position, it pays to try different framings and compositions 
as well as different focal lengths, different heights, different shutter speeds and viewpoints. This shot was taken from up on the cliffs looking down towards the harbour. Fortunately, there was still some colour left in the sky. I'm at Sands End Beach, which is about four miles on from, from Whitby. And again, I've been doing some long exposure pictures with the OM1 12 to 40. The setup that I'm using is I've got a Lee soft edge grad, a nine stop soft edge grad on the front just to hold a little bit of detail in on the sky. I've also got a Kud four stop neutral density filter as well. And using that in combination with Live ND, I did try some longer exposures, 20 second, 30 second or longer. Um, I wondered what it would look like. To be honest, looking at the back of the camera, the ones that are quarter second, half a second and, and one second actually look better to me. They get, you know, you get better movement in the water and that. But it's been quite overcast and dull today. Um, but that's enabled me certainly to get the long exposures. So one thing you do need when you're doing this sort of picture is Wellington boots. The water's really coming up now, the tide's coming in. And these are probably the last shots I'm going to get. So make sure that when you're doing this sort of thing, you've got Wellington boots on and you keep an eye, eye on the tide so you don't get cut off. So what I'm doing is waiting for the tide to go back out. So the water comes in and then I wait for it to recede. And that's when you'll often get the best, the best pictures. Although it was quite overcast whilst filming the previous video clips, the light had been brighter early on in the morning. It is a very attractive beach with a series of groins that make a good focal point to lead into the picture. These work well when shooting from a low viewpoint using the wide angle end of the zoom. The use of the Lee 9 stop soft edge grad enabled me to hold detail in the sky and give a more balanced exposure without having to resort to using HDR. Although I was primarily shooting most of the images at the 12mm end of the zoom, it's sometimes worth trying to take images at the short end of the zoom, as I did with this picture which was shot at 40mm. So here I'm going to show a few images taken on a visit to Scarborough. There are two bays at Scarborough, North Bay and South Bay. Towards the far end of the North Bay there are a series of steps as you walk down to the beach. And when there is a high tide, they can look very photogenic with the waves crashing up the steps. I tried various shutter speeds between half a second to 20 seconds to give different effects. My favourite was the shot at 20 second exposure. Although this image worked well in colour, I felt the monochrome conversion gave a stronger image. You may disagree and prefer the colour version. At the end of South Bay, there is a very photogenic Lido with an attractive curve and railings. I decided that the Lido would look particularly attractive at high tide with waves crashing over the edge. Although using a telephoto lens is something that you would not normally associate with landscape photography, there are times when a long lens can work exceptionally well. And these shots were taken at the 150mm end of the 40 to 150 f2.8. Because I do not have a filter holder for this lens, I had to rely totally on using Live ND to give me a long enough exposure. I wanted to get the motion of the waves as they crashed against the wall of the Lido. I didn't want to totally freeze the waves, so selecting a shutter speed of half a second gave a pleasing effect. I also felt a figure walking around the curve of the walkway would give a sense of scale. Although I took a series of shots of people as they walked along, I had to wait a long time for someone to be in the right position just as the wave came crashing in. Fortunately, this lady walked into the picture just at the right moment. 
for people who are new to using the OM1, there is a very good technical guide on using the OM1 for landscapes and seascapes. It's by Phil Norton, who is one of the UK's top landscape photographers. You can purchase the guide and download it to either your PC or smartphone, and it covers all the settings that you would need for the OM1. It's very comprehensive and has a particularly good section on long exposure photography, covering live ND, high res mode and lots more. I will put a link to Phil's website in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.